Oh, you got two cameras now. This is you bought a new one. Yep, being upgraded. It is, Jay. You don't stop. I think you like them more than you actually need them. No, I just uh, buy them because I need them. No, yeah, right. I don't believe that. I think this is your hobby, and forcing us to behave like trained fucking seals is just so you can indulge your hobby. No, really, that's not true. Are you ready? I'm ready. We are gonna taste very cheap wines today. Yum, yum, yum. Didn't we already do that once? It was only once. And, and once goes a long way with that stuff. Yeah, but today's ones are a little bit more expensive than the previous ones. Define cheap for us. Yep, it's under thirteen dollars. Under, under thirteen dollars. Okay. Yeah. Okay. The, look, in the real world, that's where people are drinking, and not only that, but there's some very acceptable stuff. Oh yeah, mm. there are some. There's a white and a red that I buy nearby. They each cost seven ninety nine. So they're easy, reliable, fresh, good. Then you're gonna taste multiple seven ninety nine wines today, probably. I would hope that they're all delicious, but I suspect many will not be. Generally speaking, so I don't want to preempt the tasting. But generally speaking, for seven ninety nine, you're not getting terroir. So what you're getting is heavily manipulated wines, intentional residual sugar, oak chips, things like that. Mega red, mega purple, all the tricks that they use to make these wines. And I'm going to call BS on those. Mm -hmm. And also, when you start throwing in oak on these wines, at that price level, you invariably start screwing them up. And, and the oak and the sugar is there to, to cover up yeah. deficits. And also, it's a category where you get bang for your buck with Rhone varieties, some Italian varieties. Those are the wines that I enjoy more so at that price point. And that most of those tend to come from other parts of the world. Chile, where you can buy a real Cabernet for under $10. The Languedoc, where you can buy real almost anything. Right. The south of Italy, same thing, Abruzzo and places like that. Let's have at it. We talk too much. We don't to drink. Let's do it. I don't believe we have a Languedoc wine today. Really? Mm. Okay. Where do, I, where do I put this? Another day. Another day. No, I selected the wines which are very popular in many countries. And then we should do a follow-up where we take whatever ones that we thought were the best here and then Peter and I will come up with some wines to challenge them. Yeah, you like that idea? Sounds exciting. Do you think you'd like to film that? Yeah, of course. Okay, we'll, we'll do it. Let's but do we're so. getting ahead of ourselves. <laughs> in the end, please select two best and two okay. worst wines. Okay. Two best and two worst? Yes. That's nasty. Mm -hmm. Okay. I love to be nasty. We have 10 bottles. Ah, oh, okay. Not so bad. Two flights of five. Yeah. Five whites, five reds? No, 10 reds. <laughs> Sorry about that. <laughs> You know, it's lucky I've got the rest of the day to recover. <laughs> okay, let's do it. Ten reds. Ten reds. You remember you and I and we had the, what was his name? We did 147 Chardonnays, all California. And it was so bad that every now and again you found a corked wine. It was a delight <laughs> because it was different. <laughs> Well, that was also that was also during the time of was it Oz Clark? No, it wasn't Oz. No, Clark. no, that was a time of a very high oak, even higher oak usage than now. Yeah. Full malolactic, buttery, diacetyl, rancid popcorn. <laughs> I love inexpensive wines that are delicious. Mm -hmm. yeah. I hate inexpensive wines that are disgusting. <laughs> <laughs> Peter, would you tell that crow to shut up, please? <laughs> <laughs> Today is Saturday. We're in Huntington Beach, California, where we do have idiots riding down the street. Uh, the sound of the car, the power of the car, is frequently inversely proportional to the size of the penis of the car's driver. You saw a man with a very small penis driving his fast little blue car. <laughs> I drive a Mini. <laughs> Patrick? I'll start off, sure. Medium plus red, some clearing at the rim. I get some green notes on it. There's some oak on the nose, maybe a hint of cassis. It's leafy as well on the palate. I thought it was a Cabernet Sauvignon, so I thought it had fairly good variety of character. It will have good varietal character if I'm correct. It won't <laughs> if I'm wrong. <laughs> and then, and it was okay for a while, and then I just got this really bitter finish that 
led me to a thumbs down. I more or less uh, agree with Patrick, so I won't go through everything. I just want to say that what I've noticed with some of these lower priced wines is no matter what the variety, I get the character of boot polish that I never get on very expensive wines. Mm. And I don't know how they get the boot polish. It's certainly not desirable. So this is one of the ones that had it. And I scored it 14. I would encourage you, the International World of Wine does not use a 20 point scale for the most part anymore. Use a 100 point scale. I'm not a part of the international world of wine. <laughs> That's obvious. <laughs> <laughs> old habits die hard. You can't teach an old dog new, new tricks. Tree. Woof woof. <laughs> <laughs> the first wine. 19 Crimes. Southeastern Australia. What's the grape varieties? Yeah. Shiraz, Cabernet Sauvignon, Grenache. 2018. And the price? $10. You know, for $10, Cabin Syrah, it's not a bad wine. It's just, I would have a hard time drinking a glass of it. My problem with this wine is the, the pandering that is evident in most of these wines with that upfront sweetness. So the residual sugar on the wine. And so that's why I was saying a little earlier when we started this that I would like to see some wines from the Languedoc, from Southern Italy, because there, there are people out there that go out into their vineyards and they make serious wine at those kind of prices. Wines mm -hmm. that they can be proud of. The wine is made by the winemaker versus by the marketing manager. Mm -hmm. And these are wines made by yeah. the marketing manager. Yeah. Well, they're looking for scores. Yeah. I would have liked the wine better if it had less oak on it. Less oak. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But I mean, the oak is like, you know, it's not, not exactly the good old barrels, right? Right, yeah. Alrighty, next one, Peter. So number two is darker than number one. There's something cool on the nose. What do you mean by being cool on the cool, nose? Cool for me is the sort of the green, the menthol, the, the things that point me towards Bordeaux varieties, Cab, Merlot. It's not sweet, which was a relief to me. It's good acid, a bit hot, got a lot of faux oak on it, uh, some chocolate. I found a little raw on the back of the palate, but more real than number one. Mm -hmm. um, a, a more genuine product. And I can see as this wine might be more popular than that one because that one is sweeter. Mm -hmm. But this is the better one. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So quite clearly the better yeah. one. I agree. With most of what you said, Peter, a bit hot though, you know, fairly good length and quality. For me, that's a much better wine than the than the first one. It is. This is my favorite. It is? This flight. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. That's mine as well. Yeah. The second one. H3. Cabernet. Sun. Cabernet from? From Washington State. I believe this is from Columbia Crest. Okay. Mm -hmm. They're the biggest producer around there. What's the next one? 2017. For the um, price? 11. Yeah, for $11. Nice one. I even love the label. Mm -hmm. <laughs> that was number two. Yeah, that was okay. number two. I like the bottle too. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah very nice. Mm -hmm. oh. That's where they spent their money. <laughs> on the glass. You know, this isn't just Washington, this is specifically Horse Heaven Hills. When you're purchasing wine, the more specific the designation on the label as to where the wine's coming from, often the better quality. So, for the most part, Washington State will be lesser quality, not always, than something that says Columbia River Valley. And then Seven Horse Hills will be higher quality still because it's more specific. Horse Heaven Hills is an American AVA, so obviously smaller than, than the state of Washington. Yeah, I liked it. Right. Okay, the third one, light to medium red, some muted berry characteristic. There's some green notes. I thought the palate was better than the nose. There was some nice fruit, some oak on the finish with some bitterness detracted a little bit for me. New World, I can't tell place. And some of those green notes could be their Merlot or Cabernet Sauvignon. Very highly manipulated, no place, but fairly good. I think I could drink a glass of this. I'm with Patrick. I've almost got nothing to add. California Cab for me. I really didn't like the wine because of what you just talked about, the, the absolute manipulation, basically the cynical manipulation of this wine. That sounds um, like a lot of marriages. <laughs> 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 they did quite a good job of the evil machinations. I think the wine turned out decently mm -hmm. for the price. I thought it was decent, though seriously manipulated, California Cabernet Sauvignon blend. I sensed the highest VA in this wine, on this flight, isn't you? 
Yeah, there's some VA there. I do too. I get it more on the palate than I do yeah, on the nose. It is there. It's certainly below the legal threshold. Yeah. And when I say that I got it on the palate more than the nose, meaning I'm not smelling right away uh, nail polish remover or vinegar on it, but when I swallow a tiny bit, I do get this bite in the back of my throat that I get from volatile acidity. All right, number three. Beringer Founders Estate. Founders Estate? Yeah. Cabernet Sauvignon, California, 2018, $11. I believe we've tasted multiple Behringer wines. We have. And so far, this is the best. <laughs> <laughs> the wine number four. So I got wine number four as darker, dull ruby uh, with some legs, very strong boot polish. It's a little short, almost thin in the middle. One dimensional, quite boring. I think it's a New World Cabernet blend. I didn't think it was particularly good. Yeah, I would have scored this one lower than the other ones. And the reason being, it, it has a sweet sour note and some volatile acidity on the nose. It's got some Cabernet Sauvignon notes, but not necessarily the most pleasant Cabernet Sauvignon notes that I would hope to find. There's some green notes that I wasn't particularly keen on. The oak seemed a bit cheap. Ordinary, very ordinary. Yeah. What do you mean by very ordinary? Michael Broadbent is a uh, master of wine who had been the head of wine at Christie's in London for many years. And one of his lines is that ordinary wines were for drinking, maybe, but not for discussion. <laughs> <laughs> I love the saying. <laughs> As the Australians would say, that's very av, mate. Very average. Yeah. Very av, mate. Number four. Los Vascos. Los Vascos. Cabernet Sauvignon, 2016. I'm, I'm surprised that Los Vascos wasn't better. I didn't pick up the Chilean footprint, fingerprint. Yeah, I didn't either. And it seemed a bit thin to me. Mm -hmm. There's some hygiene issues with the grapes not being as they could be. And that shows through in the glass. Where is it? This is from Colchagua. Colchagua. Huh. Yeah. And the price? 11. 11. Usually in Colchagua they make better wine. Yes. Uh -huh. And then number five, Patrick? This was the darkest and the most purple. Lots of fruit, lots of oak, some lead pencil, lots of bitterness, lots of manipulation, bitter on the finish. I could see that there's a subset of people that like these kind of wines. Somebody who doesn't get bitterness, for them this is going to be juicy, maybe even jammy. Many of us in the world of wine use that as a pejorative, but some people like jammy wines. They would get lots of fruit and enjoy it. When I get this, the bitterness ruins it for me, and I suspect that this is manipulated up the wazoo. I don't like it. Much less pleasant. Yeah. I, I have nothing to add to what Patrick said in terms of his analysis of the wine. It's exactly the same as mine, except I did feel there was more of everything here. Mm -hmm. There was more concentration of the fruit. There was more wood, faux wood, but more wood. I thought it was a California Cabernet blend, manipulated up the wazoo, to use your terminology. Okay. Not that I liked it better. All right, number five. Mondavi. Worst Mondavi, private selection. 2018. Cabernet Sauvignon, California, $8. Really? Oh, yeah. Interesting. Yeah. For the price, it's... We had a Mondavi Reserve uh, Cabernet Sauvignon a few tastings ago. That was delightful. Perhaps this wine outsells all the others combined. Yeah. Other than that, they're leaving money on the table. One of the two. Look how Patrick lines up his glasses. Oh, yeah. There's something obsessive-compulsive about that. <laughs> it's very professional. <laughs> A little professionally obsessive compulsive. <laughs> What's well, interesting that that term compulsive in the rest of the world that's usually viewed in a negative fashion. When I was uh, doing my internal medicine training in New York at Cornell's teaching hospitals, compulsive, being compulsive about taking care of your patients and making sure everything is done correctly, was a very positive characteristic. <laughs> good interpretation. Well, mm -hmm. Patrick, then I congratulate you on your positive attributes. <laughs> you have them in abundance. <laughs> this wine's got more of everything. More oak, more alcohol, more extraction, more, more manipulation, diacetyl. more diacetyl. Yeah. <laughs> and they often tend to do better in competitions and, and they, scores. They do, yeah. Last weekend I had a delightful wine. Tasting it blind I got completely messed up. It's like Piedmont wine, but I'm struggling with the grape variety. And on the other hand, it's like Burgundy. Mm -hmm. I gotta go to one place or the other for me. So you thought it was either Nebbiolo or Burgundy? Yes, they're not that different except for the, the tannins. So in the end I went with Burgundy. Do you know what it was in the end? 
piemontesi pino nero <laughs> I can't win <laughs> So you were right? You were right <laughs> Yeah, I went wrong for all the right reasons I better throw this away, can I throw it here? Do you want me to pour it away somewhere or? Yeah, this uh, Peter, Peter, your mic microphone Peter, you're stop, you're going to knock the camera over <laughs> Can't you guys take a joke? Hey, we have been. <laughs> <laughs> I left South Africa in the 1980s so that I could be free. And I come here and you tether me to a frigging camera. After all these years and I'm still not free. So it's that character on the nose of number two that I describe as boot polish. What would you call it? Heavily toasted oak dominates the nose for me. But I can see underneath yeah. that is what you're calling yeah, boot polish I can pick or shoe up the, polish. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Starting to panic to try and find the two best. <laughs> <laughs> I just had one that your boot polish wine. It's is killing you. It's right? killing me. <laughs> <laughs> it's killing me too. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I think I just gave it my lowest score. It's really hard to recover from the yeah, shock, right? Yeah, no. <laughs> it just destroys your palate. It's bitter, it's volatile. Uh, it's even destroying my brain now. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh, this is really bad. Too much shit. <laughs> Too much shit, exactly. <laughs> I have a headache on this part. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. And we're not trying to do character assassination on the people making these wines. There's a market, they perceive what the market wants, or they perceive what some people scoring wines want. And there are some wine critics. They like toasty French oak and boot polish. Yeah, I bet there are. Yeah. And God bless them. You and I, and I'm sure Peter, uh, we just don't happen to share that predilection. Well, you know, between us all tasted so many good wines, so we know what's out there. But I also know there's a 7.99 red wine, a short drive away in my car, that I could open, enjoy, open and have with a whole range of food and realize it's going to be cheaper and better than a good number of these wines. I think this one is a little bit more than 7.99 because yeah. well, I didn't buy that many 7.99 bottles. And let's do it. We, when you come to a palate killing wine, sometimes the thing to do is to stop. Let's do wines six and seven now. Mm -hmm. That'll give our ch palates a chance to recover. Then we taste the last three. Does that sound okay? Yeah, yeah, of course. Peter, do you want to go next? Because the oh, second okay. wine we found oh. to be killing our palates. Okay. Wine number six. Okay, so my pale ruby garnet, uh, very red. So I wondered with, when it's red, like this kind of red, whether it's like mega purple or mega red or something like that, or whether it's uh, just a very low pH wine. And those is somewhat better than some of the preceding wines. It's got a, very much a Cabernet character mm -hmm. to it, a sort of cordite, some hints of green. It's certainly uh, according to the formula, but they managed the formula well. I thought this was a Cabernet, high alcohol. I thought it was California. In the end, I decided, notwithstanding the promise on the nose, that it let me down and was quite a poor wine. So I didn't get one of my better scores. For people who like that style of heavily oaked, cheap New World Cabernet, it's okay. That all said, gun to my head, right now, could I drink a glass of it? No. No. What do you think, Jay? I think it's terrible. I like the nose. I thought the nose was quite yeah. promising. I thought yeah. it was one was maybe the best so far. Yeah. And then the palate really let it down. Yeah. 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 And then number six. Yellow, Yellow tail. tail cap. Yellow tail cap. It's nine dollars. Nine. We, we nine ruined yellow tail. Probably this is a little bit slightly better than the other ones, Chivras and Pinot Noir. Well, they all course. come from the same tank. It just depends what day. Oh, come on, Tuesdays, Peter. it's Cabernet. Wednesdays, it's Syrah. <laughs> Thursdays, it's Pinot Noir. <laughs> I appreciate the joke. It does taste like Cabernet Sauvignon. Yeah, no, it does. I'm kidding. Well, I understand. <laughs> I'm just here as your attorney trying to protect you. Oh, okay. Then wine number seven. This is a wine that Jay and I found to be a palate destroyer. Medium garnet red, screamed, toasty oak in an obscene way, shoe polish, non-specific dark fruit, the oak overwhelmed the fruit, a bit of a sweet entry and some volatile acidity, bitter, bitter, nasty, ruined my palate for 10-15 minutes. I'm the same as you, manipulated entry. In the end, this is my lowest score. All right, the worst one so far. Number seven, gnarly head old vine zin, zin, old vine zin. 
My God. It's from Lodi. The price, 11. They're gonna have to pay me more than $11 for me to drink that wine. <laughs> Maybe $12? <laughs> Sip. As the day goes on, you and I will be here. We'll have some dinner, and then we will taste the wines again later on in the day. There could be a change in the uh, order. Then I'm gonna leave a full bottle of number seven for you. <laughs> but it's not my birthday, and it's not, it's not Christmas. <laughs> And with some money under the bottle. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. Good. More than twelve dollars. <laughs> that was it. No more wines to test. No. First you time in my more? first time in my life I've ever felt relieved. <laughs> <laughs> so number eight. So this is a little paler than the previous one. There's a hint of age here. That's one or two years. Some legs and some extract. More interesting than most, albeit very quiet. A little bit of sweet strawberry, a little bit of VA, but not enough to really be a problem. Tight entry, but then very bitter. A little bit raw, perhaps slightly less manipulated, hot. A hint of minerality. And I thought this was the best one so far. What matters is that, could you drink it? There's a little VA on it, but that didn't get in the way for me. And it's got some very nice fruit, berry fruit, the yolk got in the way, the finish for a bit, but then it, the finish bounced back. This would be a, a very nice pizza or barbecue wine. All right. Then, number eight. This is a Juan Gil. Monastrel. 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 Murvedre. 2017. $13. But this is what I was talking about. That there are places in Europe where they try to make varietal and terroir wines. They're using one of the main grape varieties from that part of the world. And they've done an okay job. Yeah. Not okay, but okay. And I agree. There's also some spiciness. There's some black pepper there that I like. It's the best one so far. Number nine. I smelled it. It didn't speak to me very much. I tasted it. The aromatics didn't give me much. I just put NDN. Non dice niente. <laughs> <laughs> it's got some tar, some shoe polish. It's astringent. It's boring. That's all I got out of it. <laughs> all right. It's worse than bad criticism. Not particularly good. I thought it was Cabernet. But I found it particularly 1D but not manipulated like all the Californian wines have been so far. It's an interesting thing when I make that comment. I can see why when you're making wine at this price point, there's a temptation to manipulate it. Yeah, because, of course. you know, you're using such poor source material that you probably need to manipulate it to give people some of what they want, you know. Number nine, Mutunkiate. Oh, Bordeaux. 2017, $13. And the nose slightly with is that hint of warm bread. Yeah. And then on the palate. It's, yeah, yeah it's... I get it more on the palate. Okay, Peter, take us home. Ah, the last one is mine, is it? Okay. Yep. Also, paler ruby, bright legs, no extract, boot polish on the nose, big time. I couldn't get past it. Tannic, but not a manipulated wine. Great amount of juicy fruit on the nose, almost as if there were some carbonic maceration, some whole berry, whole berry fermentation. Mm -hmm. The nose was so boot polish. Yeah, for me, the shoe polish detracts. It has some nice red fruit. It's got some leather, so I wouldn't be surprised if there was some Merlot. The shoe polish and the oak and the tannins on the finish detract from me. Otherwise, initially, I like the wine. It has some nice, easy fruit, but the other characteristics seem to be taking it over. Planeta Il Rosso from uh, Sicilia, 2017. So 50% Nero Davula, 25 Merlot, 20 Syrah, 5 Cabernet Franc. Okay, and the price? 12. I wish I loved it, but I don't. We've tasted all the 10 wines. So now you want the two best and the two worst? Yes, please. I'll tell you my two best. All right. The second wine, the H3 Cabernet Sauvignon from Washington State, and wine number eight, the Monastrel, are my two best wines. All right. Okay, hold on for me for one second. Do you need an accounting firm to help you, Peter, with your tabulations? Uh, give me a sec. Uh, the Jumia. Jumia. And, and, then the, and then the Horse Heaven Hills. And me too, I agree with you. Wow, wow. And then my least favorite wines, wine number four, the Los Vascos, wasn't as clean as I would have liked, and the Gnarly Head Zinfandel from the shoe polish and some bitterness and out of balance. Those are my two least favorite wines. My two least favorite, Gnarly Head Zinfandel Gnarly. and the Yellowtail. And Yellowtail. Yeah. And for me, Gnarly Head was the worst. Yeah, the yeah. worst. And then uh, Robert Mundavi Private Selection. So would you strongly recommend 
these two wines. If you have a maximum of $11, $12 to spend, that may be where you look at. But I just have this sense that if you've got $15 or $16 to spend, you can do twice as well. Oh, we are going to do a $15 wine tasting later. I knew that was going to happen. <laughs> I shouldn't have said anything. <laughs> no, I already bought a lot of the $15 wine. <laughs> I knew you would do that. How do I get out of this? <laughs> And the I look forward to it. <laughs> Thank you. And the reason why I prepared the, the cheapest wine for today is to give you some motivation to participate in our tasting because... <laughs> You're a very good wine guy. You're a pretty shitty psychologist. <laughs> that was our tasting for today. Hope you enjoyed it. <laughs> they enjoyed it more, more than, than we, we did. did. <laughs> they enjoyed it more than we did because they didn't have to have the stuff in their mouths. <laughs> <laughs> Frankly speaking, it was a little bit more difficult to taste uh, some of these wines than the cheapest wines uh, that we've done. It's true. Well, because they, because they, they, they can't have make more, up their mind. more money to spend on oak. Some bird uh, shit on me. <laughs> that's supposedly good I luck. I remember when it happened to me last year, you laughed. So. <laughs> <laughs> I wouldn't do that. <laughs> it's very watery. <laughs> we need I to give, remember last time. We need to give the bird some ko pectate. It's got diarrhea. Yeah. I, I remember last time we're looking at there, and I looked up, and I just could see this bird asshole. <laughs> the little tail wagging. I knew what was coming. <laughs> What it has done is given me a motivation to go home and drink something really good. <laughs> <laughs> At least it works in a positive way for exactly. you for today. Yeah. Five <laughs> or six hours later, and we're trying them from lightest to heavier wines, and we're starting off with the Mouton Cadet, the inexpensive Bordeaux. Which tastes better than it did before. <laughs> exactly. Especially with us knowing what it is. <laughs> exactly, I know what it is. And it tastes better now. The Planeta, the Sicilian wine. Cheers. Cheers. It smells uh, toastier. Yeah, it smells a bit more, showing more oak. It's the green note that gets in the way. Uh -huh. And the toastiness, this little... Yeah. Juan Gil. So you heard the pop. And the reason that we're hearing the pop, mm -hmm. right? So if the, we kept these at a cooler temperature, mm -hmm. there would be no pop. But what happens is as the wine heats up a little bit, carbon dioxide, there's carbon dioxide in most wines. It doesn't stay in and uh -huh. pop. I love the smell. Yeah, but it, it had beautiful fruit before. Mm. I hope this isn't going to piss off your landlord. <laughs> My landlord uh, doesn't show up very often, so uh -huh. it's all right. <laughs> I still think this is this is a very nice one. It, this is very nice. Yeah. H3. <laughs> For people who like fruity, oaky, young, relatively inexpensive, New World Cabernets, it would fit the bill. At least I think uh, this is the best. It's the best. Among a... Uh, of the best <laughs> of the rest. What I didn't like in this wine was too much of everything. Too much of everything. Yeah. Yeah, more is not always more. <laughs> exactly. Less is more. <laughs> yeah. hmm. Still lots of oak. Oh, and the butteriness. Yeah. If this is your style, it's a great buy and you'll love it. For me, it's a bit too much oak, too much alcohol, too much sweetness. Yeah, too much everything. Too much everything. 19 crimes. This is not bad. It's tasting better. Uh huh. For me, this one, 19 Crimes, shows the same yes. tasting profile of a Robert Mundell yes. Private uh -huh. Selection. Yeah. But everything a little bit less. Yeah. <laughs> everything was a little bit less, we would like it more. Uh -huh. yeah, exactly. <laughs> Behringer? This one's not bad. The Behringer's tasting better. Now a bit more elegant. Mm hmm. Yeah, exactly. And I like the fact that we do this because it gives the wines another chance, right? Exactly. Yeah, exactly. We want the ones to do well, uh -huh, uh -huh. even though we joke around and we... We are generous. We're, we're generous. <laughs> Yellow tail? <laughs> Dios mio, por qué? <laughs> I'm a little fearful here. We may be shocked and it's improved, so... I don't know. <laughs> 
it tastes worse. Just syrupy. Yeah, very syrupy. Mm -hmm. No, I can't. I <laughs> you can't what? I can't do it. <laughs> and the Los Bascos. Los Bascos. That's one of your worst. It was a bit on the dirty side for me. Maybe it's taking a bath. <laughs> it's cleaned up. Mm, doesn't smell good. No. <laughs> it smells dirty. Uh -huh, it smells dirty. Dirty pyrazine. Mm. No, oh. this is flawed. Oh. oh yeah. So bad. And then the last one, gnarly head, old vines in. Oh, this one. Oh, sorry. I was... <laughs> no, that's the third I, one. I know, but I keep on wanting to go back to the ones I like. <laughs> <laughs> I, my uh, brain says, go, that's the one, but no, that's where I want to go. <laughs> There's some money. Oh my Patrick. God. <laughs> It must be for you. <laughs> <laughs> A bribe. <laughs> Somebody must remember what you said. <laughs> <laughs> then I'm gonna leave a full bottle of number seven for you. <laughs> and with some money under the bottle. Yeah. <laughs> oh, I won't take the money. <laughs> Why not? <laughs> no. <laughs> It's missing a zero. But it looks like a fifteen dollars. No, no, it's a five. <laughs> now, if it was one of these, a grant for a sip of wine. Right? <laughs> that would be really good. Uh, good return on. <laughs> mm. Oh. No. No. Sorry. No. <laughs> no. As far as I remember, this wine was not as bad as this yeah. before this is really bad yes just yeah. burnt yeah our favorite wine is still the spanish wine juan gil juan gil h3 mm -hmm. is still the best of the new world cabernet sauvignon cabernet sauvignon mm -hmm. we were pleasantly surprised to see that the mouton cadet is tasting better than it did before mm -hmm. i could easily have a glass of that mm -hmm. me too and I got surprised by oh this Behringer. And then the Behringer got is better. tasting more elegant, uh -huh. more balanced. I hope this was useful. Must be useful. Or fun. <laughs> Thanks, Pat. You're welcome. Cheers. Cheers. Don't forget to subscribe and leave a <laughs> like. <laughs> <laughs> Go to Wine King with two thumbs up. Sure. Maybe the wines will get better. <laughs> 이럴 땐이 와인 네이버 밴드로 놀러 오시면 와인을 잘 몰라도 편하고 싸게 사실 수 있도록 제가 많이 도와드립니다. 다들 만족하시고 좋아하시더라고요.